Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to talk about the best way to set up your assets material to export out from Blender into your game engine. So we're going to talk about the different channels and how to use them. We're going to talk about some of the more common settings for GLTF. And finally, we're going to talk about if it's actually efficient to use GLTF or not. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to actually set up our textures. Now, I've already gone through and set up all my textures, but I will quickly run through how it works. So if we go into our shading, we come in here, you'll see I have two objects here. And the reason why is because I'm going to show you guys two separate things that actually is very useful for this. So first things first, you'll notice that I have an object here that has all of these parameters already put in. And let's quickly run through how each texture goes into your material for a GLTF export. So if we come up here, we take a look at our albedo. Our albedo basically is our color map. So we'll just drag that guy into our base color. If we have any alpha, which in my case I do, if you look right here, this section here is actually gonna be alpha out. So I have a alpha cut down into my little alpha section here. So I have this little guy down here. Now, something to keep in mind is if you want alpha cutout to work inside of your game engine, you need to go into your material. You need to come into your material. You need to come down here and you need to actually go into your blend mode and change that to alpha clip. Now, if you have it as opaque, then when another game engine imports it, it's going to be opaque. If you have alpha clip, then when you import it, it will have alpha clip. Alpha hash, it'll have alpha hashed. Alpha blend, it'll have alpha blend. So just remember that that actually is transferred over. So we're going to change this to alpha clip, and you'll see that we have that nice little alpha there. And that is how we can get this alpha to actually export out with our stuff. Now, if we want our metallic and roughness to export out, we can basically put the values in these two little parameters. So you have your metallic and your roughness, and I basically have separated my ORM's material into the blue channel and the green channel. Now, if you don't know what an ORM map is, it is basically a ambient occlusion roughness metallic. So it's R is ambient occlusion, G is roughness, and blue is metallic. And that's a nice way to pack your, your textures to make them more efficient. Now, if you don't do that, if I click on this guy who doesn't have that, you can see I just pushed my roughness into my, my roughness and my metallic into my metallic, and that will work as well, just as good. So keep that in mind. Now, something else to keep in mind is if you're gonna be doing a roughness and metallic, make sure you set those to non-color data. That way the color space is correct and the data will come across correctly. Same thing with your normal map. If you want a normal map, you basically just set that to non-color. You hook it into your normal map and you hook it to normal and it should just transfer over just fine. And same thing with emission. If you see, I click on this guy here and I come in here, you can see I have an emission one right here and it goes down and into my emission. So that's cool. But how do we handle AO? Ambient occlusion has been a thorn in a lot of people's side when it comes to exporting out from Blender. And the easiest way to do it is actually to just take your separate color and to duplicate it like so. Control group it. And then just drag this guy out like so. X, delete that. Get rid of these two input parameters like so. Change this from type color to float. Change this to occlusion. Tab out change this guy here to G L T F with capitals. So you can see I'm actually doing G L T F space settings exactly like that. If you don't do it exactly like that, it will not work. Now you'll notice that I have a zero two. And the reason why I have a zero two is because I actually already have a group in here called G L T F settings. Cause I was doing some testing. So if I go into groups, you can see I actually have a GLTF settings right here, but it is literally the exact same. You can see if I come in here, it says occlusion, occlusion, GLTF settings, GLTF settings dot zero zero two. So this wouldn't work. This one will. If I hit tab, you'll see it has a group input of occlusion to result. So just keep that in mind. It is type float. If you hit tab, 
we can drag our red into our GLTF settings group like that. And we will have that export out. Now, something to keep in mind, if you do any changes to your textures or any changes to your stuff, it will export with those changes. So as long as you make those changes before it goes into base color, it will get baked down into a texture. So keep that in mind. So if you were to do something like mapping and you were to come in here and drag in a vector map and you were to change your scale to some crazy numbers or something, that would translate over. So just be cautious of that and make sure that you're aware that that's going to all translate over and you should be good to go. So now once you have that, we have one more thing to really talk about. And that is in the settings area down here by alpha clip. If you click backface calling, that will turn on backface calling like so, and that will turn it on in your game engine. Okay. So if you have it off, it will be off in your game engine. So keep that in mind. In my case, I want this guy to, to not have backface calling. So I'm going to keep it off and I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to go up to file export GLTF. And I already have a project here. So that way I can show you guys this, but let's quickly run through some of these options that actually matter. So you can see here we have format GLB is GLTF a binary format. So it's all one big project. GLTF plus bin plus textures is actually the GLTF plus a bin plus the actual textures themselves. So it'll actually export out your textures for you, which is really useful sometimes. GLTF embedded is basically just GLTF uh, binary, but in a less efficient format, but allows you to edit it. If we go into include, that allows you to select what's included. Pretty simple. Transform is the transform data. This actually matters. So something that I run into all of the time is my vertex colors is turned on. And a lot of times when I'm doing my stuff, my vertex colors uh, come across and color my mesh in weird ways. So I always make sure I disable this because it always causes problems for me. It might not cause problems for you, but in my case, it has caused a lot of problems in the past. Outside of that, if we go to material, material export, you want to make sure that that's on images automatic. You can actually choose a specific format if you want to. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about PBR extensions. You're not exporting any lights, so it doesn't matter. Compression doesn't really matter in the sense of game engines, but if you're looking for like an asset website or something like that, compression can matter. And finally, animation, something that GLTF Something that not a lot of people explain is that GLTF can support different animation types. It supports your animation, which is basically just like your regular animations. Like if you want to move a cube from one point to another, it'll export that out. If you want to export out a shape key where if you have like a, a character creator or something like that, you can actually export out your shape keys for that. And for skinning, that's for all of your character controller stuff or all your character stuff. That all will get exported. But what it will not export out is if you were to animate a material or if you were to animate something like a texture itself, that's not going to come over. Or if you you know animate any of the render stuff, that's all not going to come across. So that's just something to keep in mind. But once we have all this set up, we can just click export. And I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. So I'm going to export this guy out as well. Export GLTF. And I'm going to call this ceilinglight.glb. We're going to export that guy out and then I'm going to open up Godot, which is my game engine of choice. And we will go ahead and import this and run through it. All right. Now that we're sitting in our scene, let's go ahead and actually take a look at our light export. So our light export looks like this. If I readjust the size real quick, I'm not going to go through all of the settings in here. That doesn't really matter. But what's important is just remember that GLTF embedded images is set to extract textures. That's important. Outside of that, for the most part, everything else should just come across pretty well. So we'll go ahead and click close. We're going to drag this into our game and you will see right here, bam, it exists. So now we could just rotate this guy and pull him up and put it in our project just like that. And there we go. Now, if we take a look at this guy, you can see we have a bunch of changes here. So if we take a look at our transparency, you'll see our alpha is alpha scissor. That's because we set our alpha as alpha hashed. 
which is basically Alpha Scissor in Godot, so just keep that in mind. Call mode is set to disabled. That's because we didn't turn on back face calling, so it already set that for us. If you take a look at our vertex color, you can see it has vertex color on, but it's not colorizing my mesh, which means it didn't actually export anything. It's just using it, so that's okay. If we take a look at our albedo, you can see that we have our albedo map, which is perfect. We look at our metallic, you'll see our metallic is a funky color. That's because it actually created the ORM material, so the ORM texture. So it actually created an occlusion roughness in metallic. Roughness, emission, there's our emission, there's our normal map, and there's our AO map all set up for us. Now, you might not believe me if I say that it actually created an ORM for us because, well, frankly, I already had an ORM right here, right? So if I take a look, you can see that it basically already existed. So let's actually open up something that doesn't have an ORM. Let's open up our light. Because if you remember, it doesn't have your metalness and roughness. It doesn't have an ORM. So if we head over to Godot here, we go into our node 3D. We drag in our ceiling light like so. You can see here's what it looks like. So if we drag this guy up, I'm going to bring this guy up just like that. You'll see that we already have our actual emission right there. But if we click on our ceiling light, we open it anyway, we click on our cylinder, we go into our mesh, we go into our surface, our material, you will see that our metallic is a funky pink color. And that's because it already created our ORM for us. So it automatically made our stuff the most efficient way possible. And that's pretty much how you export your stuff out of Blender and into your game engine. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hey, you know, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I'm here to make content for you guys. All of my videos on this channel are viewer suggested videos. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to take a look at them and add them to my gigantic list of tutorials. And hey, if you have any questions or comments about this, Hit me up in the comments below or jump on my Discord. The link is in the description and anyone there will be more than happy to help you out with any questions you might be having. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching. I'll see you all next time. Thanks.